Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. This video is about recurrent abdominal pain in children. About 10% of the healthy school children between ages of 5 and 15 years will at some time experience recurrent episodes of abdominal pain severe enough to interfere with the normal activities. Now an organic cause can be found in fewer than 10% of the patient. Now the symptoms and signs. Attacks of abdominal pain are characteristically of variable duration and intensity. It is not rare for the child or parent to report that the pain is constant all day every day. Although the pain is usually located in the peri-umbilical area, location far from the umbilicus does not rule out recurrent abdominal pain. Now pain may occur both day and night. Weight loss is rare. Now, pain may be associated with dramatic reactions such as frantic crying, clutching the abdomen, and doubling over. Parents may be alarmed and the children are often taken to emergency department where the evaluation is negative for an abdominal crisis. Now, school attendance may suffer and enjoyable family events may be disrupted. The pain may be associated with paler nausea, vomiting, and slight temperature elevation. The pain usually bears little relationship to the bowel habits and physical activity. However, some patients have a constellation of symptoms strongly suggesting irritable bowel syndrome. These include bloating, postprandial pain, lower abdominal discomfort, and erectile stool habits with a sensation of obstipation or incomplete evaluation of stool. A precipitating or a stressful situation in the child's life at the time the pains begin can sometimes be elicited. School phobia may be a precipitant. A history of functional GI complaints is often found in the family members. A thorough physical examination is essential and it is usually normal. Complaints of abdominal tenderness elicited during the palpation sometimes seem out of proportion to the visible signs of distress. Now the laboratory findings. Complete blood count, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, urine analysis, and stool test for the occult blood is usually sufficient. In the adolescent female patient, ultrasound of the abdomen may be helpful to detect the gallbladder or ovarian pathology. If the pain is atypical, then further testing suggested by symptoms and family history should be done. Now the differential diagnosis. Abdominal pain secondary to the discomfort of urinary tract and extra abdominal sources are listed in this table. Now pinworms, mesenteric lymphadenitis and chronic appendicitis are improbable causes of the recurrent abdominal pain. Now, lactose intolerance usually causes abdominal distension, gas, and diarrhea with milk ingestion. At times, however, abdominal discomfort may be the only symptom. Abdominal migraine and abdominal epilepsy are rare conditions with an episodic character often associated with vomiting. The incidence of peptic gastritis, esophagitis, duodenitis, and ulcer disease is probably underappreciated. Upper intestinal endoscopy may be useful. Now the treatment and prognosis. Treatment consists of reassurance based on a thorough physical appraisal and a sympathetic age-appropriate explanation of the nature of the functional pain. Now the concept of visceral hyperalgesia or increased pain Signaling from physiological stimuli such as gas, acid secretion, or stool is one that parents can understand and helps them to respond appropriately to the child's complaints. Keep in mind that reassurance without education is rarely helpful. Regular activity should be resumed, especially school attendance. Therapy for emotional problems is sometimes required, but drugs should be avoided. In older patients and in those with what appears to be visceral hyperalgesia, amitriptyline in low doses 
may occasionally be helpful. Now, antispasmodic medications are rarely helpful, and these should be reserved for patients with more typical irritable bowel complaints. Okay, friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health videos.